Weather is the daily state of the atmosphere and its short-term variation from a matter of minutes to as long as a few weeks. Commonly, weather is thought of as a combination of factors such as temperature, humidity, precipitation, cloudiness, visibility, and wind. Weather is spoken of in terms such as, what will it be like today? When will that storm hit our part of the state, province, or country? And how cold is it right now? How can you investigate and observe local weather conditions as well as how weather can change over time? This is Weather and Climate, Monitoring Weather. Weather is the condition of the climate in a particular place at a particular time. It occurs primarily in the lower atmosphere and is driven by energy from the sun. In this activity, you will collect weather data at specific times during the day, as well as collect weather data over a longer period of time. So today, to do this investigation, you're going to need a weather sensor uh, with GPS. And it's optional to use the weather vane, especially if you're collecting any wind speed or directional data, but you don't necessarily need it. And then, of course, you're going to need the SparkView software. Now, when I collected the sample data that you're going to have access to, I used my cell phone, and I downloaded the SparkView software onto my phone, and that way I was able to take it outside. You can also do this with the iPads in your classroom or the computer itself. So monitoring weather has two sections, two parts where you're going to be collecting data. You're first going to be tasked with finding a location outside and going out three times, three specific times, and getting data such as temperature, relative humidity, barometric pressure, wind speed. So you'll need those four. It's going to have to be a location that is shaded because you want to make sure to get those proper measurements for temperature and humidity that you want this in a shaded location every time you go out. So let me show you how to set this up. Uh, I also want to share a feature that you may or may not have used yet, and it's the ability to use the camera. Uh, that's why I really liked using my phone. I was able to take it out and use it pretty quickly. But again, you can do this with your other devices. All right, so for part one, we are going to build a new experiment. I've already connected my weather sensor to SparkView, and I'm going to choose the five-page layout here. Let me show you why I chose that. In this large frame, I want to have my camera enabled. Hey, so this way I can actually show the location of my weather sensor and you can see the background, uh, especially if you can make sure to get a shot of the sky so you can see what kind of cloud cover is there. Just a really neat thing that you can do. Uh, and I'll go ahead and just mark that. When I got an image I like, I checked. Then I need to do temperature. And notice how I'm just clicking the digits display here. Select measurement, relative humidity, Digits, select measurement, barometric pressure, and then down here, select measurement, wind speed. All right, so those are the four primary measurements that you're going to have to set up and record, and we'll have the data file for you to access those. So let's talk about collecting data on the second run. So now you've already completed part A, part one, and you've gone out, say, 8.30, 11.30, and 2.30 and collected your specific time data. Well, now you're challenged with going back to that same location, and again, making sure that it's in the shade, and you are going to remote log, collect data over a longer period of time. So let me show you how you would set that up. I want to go ahead and start a new experiment. I don't need to save this one because we're going to have the data files for you. For this one, you're going to want to choose remote logging. And I see my weather sensor here. And a few things to note. This has a GPS sensor in it, uh, which is going to take up battery life. It's going to take up memory. And we don't need to use it for this, so we're going to disable it. So if you click on the drop-down menu here and go to wireless GPS sensor, you can disable that sensor. Let me switch back to when it was on, and it's telling you that you've got memory to support about eight hours of logging. As soon as I disable that, 
it's bumped it up to 14 hours. Another thing you can do to help save memory over a long period of time, so I'm gonna go back to the weather sensor and then check out the sample rate. So one hertz, that means every second, I only have 14 hours. Say I wanna record data for a full 24 hour span or even a few days, you want to increase the sample rate here and watch what happens to the days and hours of memory as I increase that. For the sample data that you're gonna receive, I set this up to take readings every 30 seconds. We did a three hour run that we'll show you in data analysis and then also we did a 24 hour run with you for you with video. So you can actually see the data change through the day and it correlates to the video. Pretty neat things that you guys can access. All right, so once I have my GPS disabled and I've increased my sample rate, I'm gonna click OK. And it's telling you now that you can just drop out of the computer. You don't need it anymore. I realize that my sensor is definitely doing remote logging because this has changed to an amber color. So that's letting me know that it's working. And now I can leave my computer here in the classroom and go outside and collect data. So pretty neat thing that you guys have access to. So again, two sets of data you have to collect. Three times, same location, specific times through the day, and then remote logging over a long period of time. Okay, so let's dive into the sample data. I want you to see what you're gonna be working with if you're not gonna be conducting this personally yourself and you're gonna be doing your analysis on your student sheet from these sample files. All right, so remember the first thing we needed to do is we needed to find a location and we needed to go out three times during the course of the day and collect information. So here you can see I went out at 8.30 in the morning. I used that option to take a picture using my cell phone. So you can see the location, it's in a nice shady area. Uh, and then you'll be able to see, you can kind of see the clouds through the trees here. It was a very clear day. So you needed to record temperature, relative humidity, barometric pressure, and wind speed. And I have to note that the wind speed doesn't change here and it's important to know your locations, the way that the wind was blowing that day and the building uh, that was on the other side, or actually facing the front of that uh, weather sensor there, blocked the wind. Uh, so I'm not gonna have wind data on this one. It'll be different for you possibly, depending on where you place your sensor. Just keep that in mind when you're collecting data. If you wanna change from Celsius to Fahrenheit, a lot of times we need to record both. You're gonna click on the temperature and then go over here and change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So you have that option. All right, so that's the 830 data. I wanna show you the 1130. So I chose to do my data collection every three hours. Uh, and then here's our data for 11.30, and I want to point out, you'll see some interesting stuff in the background there. Uh, it went from being pretty clear to being pretty smoky, because at this very time, we actually had a grass fire that was in front of the building. Everything was fine. Nobody had to evacuate. Just thought that was an interesting thing that we caught that day during data collection. And then the last one, I did at 2.30. And when you're going through these, please pay attention to the pictures. It'll help you answer some of those questions. So you can see here now at 2.30, uh, the sun was certainly shining again. The sky was clear. All was right with the world. And you'll record all that information into table one along with the 8.30 and 11.30. All right, so that was part one. Uh, the next one you had to do was remote logging over a longer period of time. So I wanna show you the three hour one first. If you look in the activity, it says at least three hours. So you could go much longer if you want. I think 24 hours really is ideal for you to see some neat patterns in the weather. But let's start with the three hour. And for this one, you're collecting data just of temperature and relative humidity and creating graphs out of them. So there is temperature and relative humidity. Pretty neat 
relationship that you're probably seeing here. I'm not going to go in depth because that's what you're going to do on your student activity sheet. But you can definitely see a correlation between temperature and relative humidity through the day. If you were curious to see other measurements, you are welcome to do that. Just click on the measurements tab and then choose which one you want to look at. So maybe I want to see, let's leave that one temperature. Let's change this one to UV index. So you can see the relationship there. Uh, when was the time you really need to make sure you had sunscreen on, that sort of thing. So that's the three hour range. We also have a 24 hour file. There we go. Nice data. So I started collecting data at around 8.30 in the morning. I'm not going to tell you the date just yet because I think the video might give it away. But then I did a full, actually it was more like 25 hours because I overslept. So I stopped at 9.30 uh, in the morning the very next day. So here's a 24 hour period of time. So when you're doing your student activity sheet, you can either um, create graphs one and two for temperature and relative humidity using the three hour data file, or you could pick a section in here, make sure it's consecutive though, meaning that it's all together, uh, of where you can analyze that data and complete the graphs using this. But let's show you one more thing. So pay attention here. You see that my temperature slowly increases through the course of the day, then decreases, and then in the morning it starts to rise again. Let's check out a video. All right, so while I had this remote logging in the shade uh, under an umbrella on my patio, I set up a, a time-lapse video of my backyard so you could correlate what you're seeing in the data file with what actually is happening. So check this out. And it's neat to see this condensed down because this was about 25 hours of recording here. Taken down to about a minute and 39 seconds. Make sure you're looking at all parts of the video. There are certain things that you might want to notice to make some connections with. And you'll see as the daylight is starting to shift, the sun is starting to set. It was a bit of a windy day. Hmm, I wonder what all those little flashes are. You can probably guess what day this was done. Okay, so we're going later in the evening. It'd be interesting to see the humidity and the temperature data at that point in time. And then we have sunrise. Beautiful clear morning. And these are really cool things that I want you to take the time, watch the video a few times. So look at what the starting temperature was in the morning. I'll go ahead and tell you. We did this for on July 4th. Uh, we thought that would be a neat thing for you guys to see. Pay attention to what the temperature was on July 4th when we had clouds in the sky versus this next morning where it was a clear as a bell morning and see how the temperature uh, changed there. Lots of great things for you to look at here. So between the data files that you have, the images we're going to share with you, and this time-lapse video, you can put all of those things together and be able to answer the questions that are found in your student activity sheet.